Hey everyone, in this video we'll be discussing vector spaces and linear algebra. We're going to take a step into linear algebra now, which deals with vector spaces or linear spaces and linear transformations between these spaces. A vector space over a field F, usually the field of real numbers or complex numbers, is a set V along with two operations that satisfy a list of axioms. The operations are vector addition and scalar multiplication. We will introduce vector spaces, a central concept in linear algebra. A vector space is a set of elements called vectors, combined with two operations called addition and scalar multiplication that satisfy certain axioms. So here's our question set that we need to discuss today. Let's consider the set R squared of ordered pairs of real numbers, A comma B. The operations are defined as follows. Vector addition, it looks like the addition is adding coordinate wise and scalar multiplication is distributing the scalar coordinate wise. Verify whether R squared plus star is a vector space over the field of real numbers. Remember, a vector space needs to satisfy eight properties. So my answer is yes, R squared comma plus comma star is a vector space. Let's prove it. I accidentally submitted my answer before I can actually prove it. So I'm gonna regenerate this response by writing my proof here instead. Let's start with showing closure under addition. So the set is closed under addition because the result of adding two vectors is an ordered pair, which is an element of the set R squared. For part two, we have to show commutativity of addition. To do this, we let A, B, C, and D be real numbers. And now we're gonna compute A comma B plus C comma D. And we're gonna show that the result is the same thing if instead we swap the order of the ordered pairs. So according to the definition, this is equal to A plus C comma B plus D. Now the trick here is that we get to assume that the real numbers are commutative. And so that means that A plus C is the same thing as C plus A. And likewise, B plus D is the same thing as D plus B. So far we have shown that A comma B plus C comma D equals C plus A comma D plus B. So we have that A comma B plus C comma D equals C comma D plus A comma B, which means that addition in R squared is commutative. Next, we have to show associativity of addition. Associativity is usually the most gruesome one to prove. We're gonna let A, B, C, D, E, and F be real numbers. You could see already that this is gonna be a little weird. So next we have to show that if we add the first two ordered pairs first and then add the last ordered pair, that this will be the same thing as if we instead add the last two ordered pairs and then the first ordered pair. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna compute this expression here. So we start by adding the first two ordered pairs and then we can combine everything into one ordered pair. Next, I'm gonna show that we get the same result if we instead add the last two ordered pairs first and then add the first ordered pair and we end up getting the same result. So that means that plus is associative. For number four, we have to show the additive identity. So my claim is that zero comma zero is the additive identity. So let A and B be real numbers. Then if we add the ordered pair A comma B plus this alleged additive identity, then we get A plus zero comma B plus zero. What's important here is that A plus zero is an operation in the real numbers. And in the real numbers, zero is the additive identity which means that we can simplify a plus zero to be just a. So the result is a comma b, which proves that zero comma zero is the additive identity. Next, we have to show additive inverses. So my claim is that if you have any ordered pair a comma b, then the additive inverse would be negative a comma negative b. To prove this, we should get the additive identity as a result of adding the additive inverses together. According to the operation, we get a plus negative a comma b plus negative b, but negative a by definition is the additive inverse of a in the real numbers, meaning that a plus negative a is zero and b plus negative b is zero. And so as a result, we get the additive identity. Next, we have to show closure under scalar multiplication. So let a, b, and k be real numbers. Then k star, a comma B is just K times A and K times B. What's important here is that this operation here is not the same thing as these two operations. These two operations represent multiplication in the real numbers, whereas this operation 
represents scalar multiplication on ordered pairs. So it's important to know that even though I'm using the same symbol for both, they actually have two different meanings. To show that six is true, we just have to state that the result is an ordered pair, which it is. The next thing we need to show is distributivity of scalar sums. So let A, B, X, and Y be real numbers. So when they say scalar sums, they mean that scalars are being added. So X plus Y represents a scalar on the ordered pair A comma B. Now by definition, this is X plus Y star A and X plus Y star B. Now we do know that the distributive property holds for real numbers, meaning that since this operation here, this star is multiplication in the real numbers, that means the number A distributes into this parentheses and the same applies to B. So we can rewrite this as we get XA plus YA comma XB plus YB. Next, we have to show that we get the same result if we instead scale the vector A comma B by X and Y separately and then adding the results. So this gives me XA comma XB plus YA comma YB. Now what's important here is that these additions represent additions in the real numbers, but this addition here represents addition in R2. With that said, we do addition coordinate wise. So we add the first coordinates together and then we add the second coordinates together. And so if you notice, either way we get the same result, which means that the distributive property holds for scalar sums. Lastly, we need to show the distributivity of scalar multiplication over vector addition, which is gonna look very similar to number seven. In this case, we'll need A, B, C, D, and K as real numbers. So we need to show that we get the same result whether we add the ordered pairs first and then scale, or if we scale each ordered pair first and then add. We need to show that we get the same results. We can start by adding a comma b plus c comma d. That's by definition of addition in r squared. Next, we're gonna use scalar multiplication in r squared, and we get k times a plus c comma k times b plus d. Now we know that the distributive property applies to the real numbers, which means that we can distribute this k across this parentheses, since this multiplication here isn't scalar multiplication, it's multiplication in the real numbers. So we get ka plus kc comma kb plus kd. Next, we're gonna try to get the same result by scaling each ordered pair first and then adding the results of those two vectors. So we get ka comma kb plus kc comma kd. And next we can use addition in R squared to get ka plus kc comma kb plus kd, which is what we got from here. This means that these two things are equal and so we have shown the distributivity of scalar multiplication over vector addition. Therefore, R squared comma plus comma star is a vector space. Let's see how ChatGPT responds to this. Excellent work. You've thoroughly demonstrated your understanding of the properties that define a vector space. Nice. Feedback. Your detailed answers to each of the eight properties are all correct. Nice. Progress. We've taken a big step into the world of linear algebra, and you've risen to the occasion wonderfully. You've successfully demonstrated your understanding of a key concept in linear algebra, vector spaces. You've shown that you can verify whether a given set with two specific operations forms a vector space by checking the necessary properties. So before we move on, I want to make an adjustment here. This would be the topics that we would cover next, but I'm actually going to hit the thumbs down button because I don't like the progress section. From now on, I want the progress section to synthesize the progress made throughout this entire conversation history. By providing this additional feedback, I'm hoping that ChatGPT will correct the response. Let's see. Well, it seems like the new answer is no better, which kind of sucks. So because that didn't work, I'm going to instead draft a meta discussion. So since that didn't work, I'm going to instead apply my commentary in this meta section for the next video. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.